Hello fellow egg fans, it is me, Sam, the 406th least interesting person on this internet, and yesterday marked the release date of the Evil Dead game, which had me thinking about bad things, or more specifically bad guys in TTRPGs, and how we tend to do them quite badly. In this week's episode of Dungeon Brews, I have put together my top tips on making big bad evil guys and throwing them into your game such that they drive the plot along well enough to prevent your players from getting distracted by a little bit of murder oboing. Let's uh, get on with the brew. When I run my games, I'm a very improv heavy DM. The only things I generally tend to have planned out are a few locations the players might go to, some rough ideas for NPCs in my head, and a stack of magic items which I am keen to hand out to my players to incentivize them to keep on doing what they're doing. But there's one thing I always know about, and that's what the big bad egg guy has planned what they're trying to achieve, and how the world is going to change because of that. It's really crucial to understand that in any story to get people hooked, you have to generate conflict, and your vessel for conflict generation in the case of Dungeons & Dragons tends to be the big bad. When I'm conjuring up a dastardly creation, there are three questions I ask myself. The first is who are they? The second is why are they the way they are? And the third is what are they going to do because of that fact. You can start with any of these three questions. If you are building your world fresh, I would recommend starting with the third. What are they going to do because of who they are? Because that's going to dictate your plot, it's going to dictate the feel of your world. And honestly, it's an amazing luxury to have to be able to build out things around your big bad. But if you're working in a pre-existing world, maybe you're already part way into a really, really long campaign, you can start with either of the first two. Now, when it comes to working out who someone is, I like to make them as complicated as possible because it allows me to feel the role play a bit more easily and work out how they'll react to any given situation. It uh, also helps me avoiding making them evil for evil's sake. Generally speaking, I find the best way to do this uh, in order to build out a character is to start with the statistical building blocks. So what I will do is I will roll up a new character sheet. This means that you're going to generate a big bad who has foibles and who has strengths. When you have some idea of who they are, you're trying to work out why they've become the person they are. And to do this, you want to give them a raison d'etre, a reason for being. What I do is think of things which are grounded in reality. Most people are inherently selfish. They want power, they want money, and they want to be loved. Now, not necessarily everyone, and not necessarily all three at the same time, but these are easy ways to start. Why might someone want to be wealthy? Well, perhaps when they were younger, they didn't have much. They were abused by the system, perhaps some tyrannical king who took away all of their money and many of their family members starved to death. That's a justifiable reason to be pretty pissed off. If they want power, maybe they spent their life being fairly powerless and being disrespected. And if they want love, well, doesn't everyone. By choosing grand justifications for people performing evil deeds, you're creating a character who feels more fully realised is also somewhat relatable, which adds some element of moral greyness. Once you have the reasons for them being bad, you can work out what the bad things they're going to do are. So that's coming up with a concept, but how do you generate a threatening big bad? Well, I've already said that I tend to like to roll up their stats because it makes sure that some elements of their character are probably weak, some elements of their character are strong. It also provides a, a layout and a substructure for who someone is. This is effectively a player character, it is the foil to your party. This is of course just a guide, but uh, the one thing that I would say you always need to do with the big bad is to provide them with legendary actions. It gives them the opportunity up to three times per turn to react to what your players are doing, but also to cast some pretty devastating CC and damaging magics. The general breakdown is that there are three costs they can have. They can cost one legendary action point, two legendary action points, or three legendary action points. They scale up according to that in their damage and danger rating. Uh, one legendary action would be something like a standard weapon attack or a movement ability, maybe Misty Step or the ability to disengage and, and move away by half of their movement speed. And those two legendary action point abilities are things which are going to be doing a fair chunk of damage um, or some kind of CC and those three legendary action points are potentially huge AoE spells or, or unique effects. Those things which are really threatening and could potentially kill your players very, very easily. A great example for this is to look 
look at the stat block of the Lich, it has one of each of these three and is a really easy guide to go by, especially if you're creating a caster as your big bad. Alternatively to this, you can increase the number of enemies in any combat. You can provide your big bad with followers, but I don't think that necessarily solves the balance problem or provides any real threat. The only thing that can happen there is your players get overwhelmed. What we're looking for in any final fight with the big bad is the opportunity to have a climax and if you're fighting 20 goblins and a dude you're not necessarily going to get that anyway i've been sam this has been dungeon brews a show where i carelessly shoehorn my favorite things from tv shows movies and video games into the only ttrpg that i have ever had the patience to learn to play um and uh come back next week for more tips and potentially some homebrew but we'll see what is out <laughs> anyway have a wonderful week friends and uh, i'll see you next time Ta -ta.